<laughs> a message for Mama? Oh, uh, sure. Hang on, let me get a pencil and paper. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Very important meeting tomorrow morning at 10.30. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Anything else, Reverend? Well, I haven't seen you in my house very often either. <laughs> meatpacking business. Uncle Ed? Isn't he the one with only three fingers? Well, Al always said he put a lot of himself into his work. <laughs> I gotta find something to buy him for a retirement present. How about mittens? <laughs> Elizabeth, you're starting to sound just as sassy as your sister. I'm sorry, Mama. Why are you always apologizing? I'm sorry, Ruth. <laughs> Anyway, the retirement party is going to be Saturday in Macon. We're all invited. All the family is going to be there. Well, almost all of them. I can't make it. Ruth, these family get-togethers are very important. There's not that much of our family left. There's not that much of Uncle Ed left. <laughs> well, Ruth, you do whatever you want to. But I am disappointed. And I'm sure Uncle Ed will be also. Tell him I said congratulations and give him a high three. <laughs> And the frog said to the princess, if you kiss me, I'll turn into a handsome prince. So she kissed him. And then did he turn into a prince? Of course not. Man will say anything to get you to kiss him. <laughs> There's Grandma. Let's see what she got for us, OK? Hi, Grandma. What did you buy? The things for our trip to Macon. And I bought you a Where's Waldo to play with in the car. Thanks, Grandma. Finding that little man in those pictures will keep her busy for hours. It's impossible. There's Waldo. <laughs> There's Waldo. <laughs> There's Waldo. How in the world she find that little man so fast? I guess she takes after me. <laughs> to go to Uncle Ed's retirement party on Saturday. Oh, no, we, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. Can we just stay here? What is no. all the trouble? Oh, they want to go to the game instead of going to Uncle Ed's. You'd rather go to a b-ball game than hang out with a three-fingered meatpacker who smells like sausage? <laughs> I can't let you two stay here by yourselves. Well, Mom, uh, Coco can watch us. You talking about the fox guarding a chicken coop. <laughs> Well, you got that fox part right. <laughs> well, Liz, I'll be glad to watch the kids. What do you think, Mama? Well, they're your children, Elizabeth, and whatever you decide to do really is none of my business. Well, if you don't mind, Ruth. But you've always been the sensible daughter. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll do what's best for your children if you just think for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. 
are you suggesting that I'm so irresponsible I can't watch two teenagers for one night? You are my daughter, and I don't want to hurt your feelings. But yes. <laughs> Mama, I think it'll be OK. Yes! Uh, I mean, I think that'd be really nice, Mama. <laughs> Thank you very much. The answer's still no, but thank you very much. No, these are not for you. These are for Mrs. Royal. Oh, Willis, thank you so much, but it's not my birthday. Did you back over my mailbox again? <laughs> no, ma'am. I ran into Reverend Cook. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't mean that way. I, I was delivering mail at the church, and he told me how you twisted your ankle. Willis, what are you talking about? You missed a very important meeting this morning with the Reverend. I would never forget a church meeting. That's true, Mama. I, on the other hand, might. Indeed. <laughs> but what does that got to do with my ankle? Well, you needed a good excuse why you missed the meeting I forgot to tell you about, so I covered for you by saying you twisted your ankle. You weren't covering for me. You were covering for yourself. <laughs> oh, hi, Mrs. Merton. Ladies. Hello, dear. How's your poor mother's ankle? Oh, see for yourself. Hello, girls. I don't want to put any weight on that ankle, Mama. Oh, you were lucky Ruth was here when the accident happened. Oh, yeah. Ruth knew I was hurt before I did. <laughs> you see, actually, Mrs. Royal oh, Willis, didn't really... Willis, Willis, why don't you put those flowers in some water? But they're dried flowers. Then give them a good soak. <laughs> Let me take that to the kitchen. Thank you, dear. I hope I don't miss anything good. <laughs> Now, you take care of yourself. We'll show ourselves out. Well, thank you for dropping by. You know, it would be a good idea to elevate that foot. Sister, I fully intend to. <laughs> and another thing, Ruth, if there's any trouble, I taped Uncle Ed's phone number to your dresser mirror. And the hallway mirror and the bathroom mirror. Well, I had to put it in places I knew you'd look. <laughs> I'll see you later, Grandma. Hi, All right, Grandma. baby. Bye-bye. OK, kids, we're leaving. Have a good time, Ma. OK, thanks. And I want you to do whatever your Aunt Ruth tells you. Unless it sounds stupid, dangerous, or illegal. <laughs> well, you better get going, Mama. Don't want to miss the guys at the meatpacking plant giving Uncle Ed a 21 weedy salute. <laughs> You got everything, Ma? Wait a minute, I think I forgot the... Oh, Hillary! Honey! Bye, Ken! Bye, Curtis! Bye, bye Uncle! Bye-bye! <laughs> Have See a good time! <laughs> OK, kids! Coco's in charge! So, uh, tell me, what are your plans for the evening? Well, tonight is the basketball game at 8 o'clock. All right! Don't talk to strangers, don't eat too much junk food, and be sure to take a sweater. This adult stuff is a breeze. <laughs> Uh, Coco, uh, Kim and I were wondering... If it's okay with you. Oh, with your permission, of course. I know where Waldo is. Where's the question? Okay, um, tonight after the game, can we have a party? <coughs> I noticed you waited until your mother and grandmother left before you brought it up. Oh, you noticed that, huh? So, Aunt uh, Coco, what do you have to say? I say no. Oh, come on, Aunt Coco. I mean, you're supposed to be our friend. Yeah. There is not going to be a party in this house tonight. Try. But a gathering? Now that's different. <laughs> a gathering? Mm-hmm. That means a quiet party with a few friends, no loud music, and everybody leaves by 11 o'clock. How about 12? How about no gathering? 11 sounds perfect. <laughs> and I will supervise it like a mature, responsible adult. you've called. The children are still fine. But mom, 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 mama, put Elizabeth on the phone. Just put her on the phone. Liz, sorry about this. I didn't want to hang up on mama. <laughs> Hello, Willis and Noah. Willis. Hold it right there, Ruth. Now, I'm not here to ask you out on a date. I have something for you, and it's absolutely free. Thanks, Willis, but I've got enough soap samples to lather me up for three lifetimes. <laughs> I'm talking about a free ticket to the Peebo Bryson concert tonight. You're offering me a Peebo Freebo? 
<laughs> well, that is so sweet. Why aren't you asking me out? Well, I have other plans. But I have a ticket that nobody's using, so uh, I thought you'd be interested. I know what's going on here. You want me to owe you a favor. Well, I'm a little smarter than that. I'll pay you face value for that ticket. No, that is not necessary. Oh, yes, it is. Suit yourself, $35. $35? For that kind of money, people better be sitting on my lap while he's singing. Well, anything is possible, because your seat is front row center. Front row center? Shut up! Give me that ticket! Well, I'll see you later, Ruth. Yeah. Okay, by Willie. Uh-huh. Row A, seat 15. Row A, seat 16. <laughs> and $35. And Coco, I gotta ask you something, okay? We need a favor tonight, right after the game. The game? Oh, that is tonight, isn't it? All right, we know you have to watch us, right? But can you watch us from a room where you can't see us? <laughs> it just so happens that a ticket for a very important concert tonight has recently come into my possession. So you're going out? Just for you. <laughs> and it'll be good for you to learn some responsibility. I can't believe you're going to do this for us, Aunt Coco. <laughs> well, that's me. Give, give, give. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, people. You know, Ruth, I had a really good time at the concert tonight. Sure, you were sitting next to somebody fun. <laughs> I can't believe you tricked me, Willis. I spent $35 to go out on a date with you. <laughs> well, for another 20, I'll kiss you goodnight. <laughs> what is that? That gathering has turned into a party. Wait, you want me to take care of it? Uh, no, thanks, Willis. I don't think I can afford it. <laughs> Over. Well, that's all we did. We don't know most of these people. <laughs> uh, I'll get it. Oh, no, you don't. And I want everyone out of here. You can say hello to Big Trouble. Hello. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, man, but we've been here three times telling them to lower the music. I'm going to have to write you a citation. Oh, fellas, come on. Everything is fine here now. now why don't you do something official, like go arrest a donut? <laughs> you know, lady, it was pretty irresponsible leaving these kids alone. You're just like my mama. <laughs> oh, really? Your mother's a white cop? <laughs> no, but she's always telling me how to act like an adult. Well, maybe you ought to listen to your mama. Here's your ticket. This is the second ticket I've paid $35 for this evening. You don't have to give me a ticket. I'll take care of things. We're not leaving until this party breaks up. You don't trust me, do you? Nobody trusts me. My mother doesn't oh, trust no, me. You no, don't trust no, me. No, Nobody no, seems no, to trust me. No, no. Ooh. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Trust me. But you did it. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't have. Because now we're all going for a little ride downtown. <laughs> Mama, why did we stay overnight at Uncle Ed's house like we planned? Are you crazy? There were 35 guests and one bathroom. You'd have to make a reservation two hours ahead of time if you wanted to use it. <laughs> Get on out of here! Come on, all of you! Let's go! Let's move it! <laughs> Hello, Mama. How was your trip? How's Uncle Ed? Keep an eye on the kids. I have to go to jail. Uh, hold it. <laughs> What's going on? Well, ma'am, we're trying to break up a party here, and this woman interfered. Mama, you can't blame me for this party getting out of hand. I wasn't even there when it happened. <laughs> uh... Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I better put that another way. Ruth, you have the right to remain silent. For once in your life, use it. Listen to your mama. Let's go. <laughs> mama, aren't you going to do anything? 
Well, I guess I have to go out there and bail her out. But first, I'm going to unload the truck and wash it. <laughs> I hope you've learned your lesson. I should say so. That was the most horrible, humiliating ride of my life. That police car is pretty scary, huh? I'm talking about the ride home with Mama. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it, Ruth. If I hadn't paid your fine, you'd be sitting in the jailhouse right now with hoodlums and lowlifes and all the rest of your boyfriends. <laughs> Why did you leave those kids unsupervised here tonight? Willis came by and tricked me into going out on a date. You mean you were outsmarted by Willis Tillis? <laughs> I'm just as shocked as you are. <laughs> That's just like you, Ruth, blaming somebody else for your mistakes. I'm not blaming anybody except myself. It was my fault. I acted irresponsibly. Oh, come on, Ruth. Do you honestly believe that we gon' Did you say it was your fault? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. Those kids Stay out of this, Elizabeth. <laughs> so you're saying you are to blame? It's your fault? You the one who acted like a horse is... Yes! <laughs> I accept full responsibility. So get all your hollering out now. I'm exhausted from my time in the pokey. <laughs> well, I'm not going to yell at you, Ruth. As angry as I am about what happened tonight, I am delighted to see you own up to your mistakes like an adult. Well, I'm delighted you're delighted. And this is all over. Freeze. <laughs> Mama, you ever been a white cop? <laughs> There's one more adult thing you've got to do for these children. Right. Kim and Curtis knew they were wrong. They also need to know that you're not going to let them get away with it. I'm not. No, you're not. You are in charge, so you have to dictate the discipline. But I've never punished anybody before. You've been punishing me all your life. <laughs> I'll go tell the kids. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to find a punishing pose. <laughs> Will you knock it off? Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> And you should know that whatever punishment your Aunt Ruth gives you has my full support. Yes, okay, Mom. Mom. I'll go get her. <laughs> you still cleaning up? Yeah. We'll talk later. <laughs> Talk now. You knew you weren't supposed to have a party that big. We know, Aunt Coco. And I think you should be hard on us. We were pretty bad. So, how about no PBS for a week? No PBS for a week. That was so funny. <laughs> would you be acting like this if your mother or grandmother were in here to punish you? No, I wouldn't be acting like this, not me. But see, you know, it's you, and, well, you're different. You're like a friend. Is that how you treat a friend? You really let me down. Well, well, we didn't mean to have a party. All those people just walked in. Yeah, it wasn't our fault. Oh, just save your excuses. I heard them all. Shoot, I used them all. <laughs> We're sorry, Aunt Coco. Yeah. Well, sorry's not enough. I've got to punish you. That's why I'm... I'm grounding you next weekend. We're grounded? For the whole weekend? Yeah. <laughs> but next weekend's the annual cheerleader picnic. Yeah, and me and Buddy were gonna crash it. <laughs> Can't you ground us the week after? Well, no. No, I, I can't. Jeez, Aunt Coco. You know, you're really turning into, well, like, an adult. There's no need to call me names. <laughs> Ooh, that was.
was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. Whoa. Mama, did you ever used to feel this bad whenever you had to punish me? Well, maybe the first two, three, or uh, four hundred times. <laughs> but by the time you reach kindergarten, <laughs> it was a part of my daily routine. What about me, Mama? Was I much trouble as a child? Oh, no, baby. You were always mature and sensible and practical and obedient. Mama, you almost make me sound like a dull child. Oh, honey. You were. <laughs> I'm worried that Kim and Curtis hate me right now. Oh, don't worry. They do. <laughs> I'm not used to being disliked. I was voted most popular girl on campus at Georgia Tech. You didn't go to college. I know. <laughs> Ruth, as hard as it is to do a good job of raising children, the rewards are worth it. Right, Mama? Usually. Ruth, you've got to understand that a part of raising children is being willing sometimes to sacrifice your popularity. Sacrifice my popularity? Well, now that I understand, count me out. <laughs> you two can keep all those rewards for yourself. Besides, somebody in this family has got to be in charge of fun. Good night, Coco's going to the Tiger Club. <laughs> Elizabeth, I don't think that child will ever grow up. But I know that I can always count on you. Yes, you can, Mama. But not tonight. Your sensible, practical, obedient daughter is going to join your wild one at the Tiger Club. <laughs> if that's okay, Mama. Just go! <laughs>